Hi there, I'm John from cncking.com and today we're going to talk a little bit about my PRS Alpha ShopBot and we're going to resurface the sacrificial board on it. When I first started at cncking.com, back then it was woodmarvels.com, I created all the models virtually and I had a network of uh, partners, I guess, people with shops that I now have uh, access to in my own shop and they would test the models for me and make sure everything was okay. And I did that for almost 10 years and it was absolutely amazing. Uh, during that time, I started up a relationship with ShopBot Tools and I ended up acquiring a ShopBot desktop. With that, I made a bunch of other models and I was able to finally bring the virtual model and the modeling that I did there into the physical world. Because up until then, I never used a CNC machine in my life. So I was selling files all around the world and it was a lot of fun and I never even touched the machinery that would actually cut my files out. I just assumed there would be something overhead cutting it out, and that was about the extent of my knowledge regarding CNC equipment. Now, when ShopBot Desktop came out, it was actually an amazing machine, and I was lucky enough to get one of the first few models out, and I made a ton of models and videos of it on cncking.com, as you can see when you go through all the different models that I have for sale there. Now, fast forward a little bit further, and I started my own business, cncri.com. CNCROI, the ROI actually means king in French because I am French. So to me, CNC King and CNCRI are essentially the same company. It's just two different platforms. CNC King deals with people who are like me, have a shop, but don't have the time or the ability to design their own models. And CNCRI.com is helping companies and individuals around the world uh, design and create and fabricate and send the models to them. Um, it could be literally be anything, any material, any shape, any size. Now, when I jumped from the ShopBot desktop to this PRS Alpha, it's a 96 by 60 table, industrial spindle, absolutely amazing machine. Um, I actually bought it used off a farmer who had it in a barn for a couple of years. And so, it, you know, it sort of worked. And what, what I did is I took it apart, brought it into the shop, and right away I started doing production work with it. It was absolutely amazing. I don't think I'd buy used machinery from many manufacturers out there, but ShopBot, based on my experience with the desktop, I had absolutely no doubt that even if I had any issues, they would help me out fix it, even though I didn't buy directly from them. And as it worked out, everything worked perfectly, and I decided to do a couple upgrades to it. One of the first upgrades I did to my ShopBot PRS Alpha was actually setting up a vacuum table underneath. And I had never used a vacuum table before. I just had a huge uh, cabinetry job to do and it worked out amazing. It's amazing when you can put a sheet on the desktop or on the, on the top of the uh, ShopBot PRS Alpha, press a button and it sucks it right down so it's totally flat. And then you can machine it and then turn it off and then just lift it off. It's just, I, I spent so many years screwing stuff into the table that it was just amazing to me that something could hold without needing screws. It was just mind blowing to me. Other upgrades I did was the dust, the dust foot. Um, I upgraded the dust extraction system. I upgraded a couple of things through the years. Uh, a couple of days ago, I got another huge contract that I have to do shortly. And the top of my sacrificial board here, after about a year, was looking kind of rough. It was full of screw holes and other things that it really shouldn't be using when I have a vacuum table, but I didn't know back then. So I decided, well, it's time to redo the top of the sacrificial board. Now, the first step with that is actually to remove the sacrificial board completely. And the fun thing is, when you have a CNC router, you can actually just CNC router off that whole sacrificial board, revealing all the channels inside.
the upgrades I did to my machine uh, was actually buying extra two sets of legs because when this shop bought PRS Alpha first came out I believe it only had four legs and that means in the middle there's really nothing supporting it. Now this machine was plenty strong and never had any problems with it but as I do projects that require a little bit more uh, precision and have a bit more weight especially when I do a lot of custom live edge work um, it's really nice to have a really really solid middle part uh, to this table. So I added the two legs there as you can see and it's nine day how much more strength there's less vibration it, it really does make a difference to have something supported in the middle when you have such a long table. Now after the channels are revealed the next step is pretty straightforward I just clean out the surface of it I install the two legs and then what I did is I applied some glue and I put a new sacrificial board on it. Now before I did that what I had to do was clean off the surface of the MDF which is what this is. MDF masonite it's all the same stuff because what there is is a thin film that develops while they're in production and what you want to do is with your CNC router just shave that off. So what I did is I shaved off the top and then I flipped it around added some glue to the channel MDF which is below here and below that again is the plywood and what that does is if I painted or added glue to this whole surface here I would seal it so what I want to do is have it held down and on the channels you have like little squares so the glue is on the little squares not on the channels around the squares and that's what helps with your hold down and after the glue is applied I just drop this down and put this on to here So after about a day of letting it set, first I ran the vacuum system to suck it down. And what's amazing to me is with MDF, when you have the vacuum system running, you have your hand over it and your hand will actually be sucked into the table. It's actually pretty amazing that there's so much suction ability out of the MDF itself. So after this all dried up, what I had to do is run the CNC router over it again to re remove another layer of uh, just a sealant that it develops on the MDF on the other side. And that means basically once that's done, your vacuum table is finished. This time around I saved a lot of time because I already had the channels and I kept them in place. If I didn't have, if I had to take everything off this, this table again, it would probably be about five or six hours to do the whole process, minus just waiting for the glue to, the glue to dry overnight. Uh, if you, all you do is shave off the top of it and add another sheet of MDF on top, it's about a two hour job. So it's really fast to do. And it's only faster if you have a very thin piece of MDF left over to shave off. So if you're looking for custom models to cut with your CNC router, laser, water jet, what have you, uh, you can check out cncking.com.